what I want to look at now is a term that I think I've used a few times but I've never really fully defined it and so I want to take a look at what does it mean to have a fielder's choice and and so this is fielder's choice is something a term we would use for to talk about the advancement of a runner from one base to the next you know something like a, a hit or an error would would do a, a similar thing but but let's look at, at how or, or why we would call it a, an advancement a fielder's choice and not you know one of those other options so basically a fielder's choice is is used to account for the advancement of a runner and and when the fielder is attempting to put out another runner so this is an advancement of a runner when a fielder is attempting to put out another runner and so and, and certainly this runner here when we say runner here this is often uh, the, the batter and so but really it could be it could be any uh, runner but let's take let's take a look at an example of of a, a batter so let's, let's have our defensive players here or infielders and then we have a let's say we have a runner on first because by definition we need more than one runner for the play so let's say the batter gets up and he hits a ball to the third baseman and so at this point the third baseman he has a couple options and so the first thing he could do is throw the ball to first base and remember during the play as soon as the ball is hit we'll see this we'll see the runner on first base run to second and we'll see the batter ru start running to first because both runners in this situation have a, a force play and so what, what, what could happen what the third baseman could do is just throw to first base in, in an attempt to get the batter out at first base but a lot of times what you'll see him do is actually turn and throw the ball to second base in, in order to get the the force out on on the lead runner which in the lead runner is is what we call the the runner who's progressed you know furthest around the bases so if in this situation even though this runner's running say you know the the second baseman would generally come over and cover the base and he would catch the ball from the third baseman he would touch the base you know before the 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 runner gets there and so that would put out this runner here and so let's say that on that play and and, and a lot of times you know he'll, he'll turn and he'll try to get the second out too he'll try to get the batter out at first but let's say in this situation he doesn't do that for whatever reason and the batter advances to first base and and so he the the batter we don't give him him credit for a hit you know but no error was made so it's like what, what so what what do we classify this as and so that's why we we've come up with the term fielder's choice and so this batter then would be advancing to first base on a fielder's choice and really it doesn't matter whether or not the the runner the other runner that the fielders are attempting to put out is safer out it, because you know just the simple fact that another runner or, or a fielder attempted to put out another runner is enough to consider it a fielder's choice so another situation you might see is that say we have a runner in the same situation we have a runner on first base and, and we get have the ball is hit we have a single to the outfield so this the batter hits a single to the outfield and for whatever reason the runner who started on first base he thinks he can make it to third base so he rounds second he doesn't stop and he keeps running on toward third base and while he's doing that the the uh, right fielder out here he sees this and so he picks up the ball 
and of course while, while this is all going on we the the runner is wouldn't have much trouble making it to, to first base so the right fielder he sees the the runner here making his way to third base so he picks up the ball the right color he picks up the ball and he throws it over to third base you know to the third baseman who's going to try to tag out the the, the runner and so on the throw whenever the the batter who's standing on first base now sees the this throw he can he can you know because the ball is nowhere near him so he can make an attempt and he can run down to second base and so because he ran on the throw we and he ends up on second base you know we wouldn't give him credit for a, a double in this situation because you know traditionally a, a runner would only be able to get a single out of this but because of the throw the, the because the right fielder made the choice to throw the ball to third base we would give this runner credit for a a single on his, his time running toward to first base and then he would get from first to second base on a fielder's choice because and so we and we have to account for each you know it, it, the advancement to, to that every every batter and every runner makes to each base and so perhaps you know we, a lot of that's taken care of by the the scorekeeper but uh, and 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 so it might not necessarily be all that important to, to any kind of fans watching in the, the stands but but that, that that's that's some something you might notice you know if a, if a runner ends up on second base you know on a play like that you know why does he only get credit for a single and that that is why because he was advancing on the fielder's choice so the final way that that a, a can have a fielder's choice is is on when, whenever a, a runner you know generally we would say a, a runner is attempting to, to steal the base so but but if in the the situation of the game if if you know the, if the score is really out of hand or something and it's late in the game and the defense really doesn't want to bother with them then then we would consider his advancement not a stolen base but it would be a fielder's choice so this is the the advancement uh, from one base to the next due to defensive indifference and so this and and so sometimes you'll hear it called defensive indifference sometimes you could you might also hear it called catcher's indifference and this is because uh, the, the the catcher would he'd be the one with the ball so if, if say the the team on defense is winning you know 17 to nothing and and it's late in the game so they're not really going to, to bother with this runner but this during a pitch this runner breaks for second base and and, and so we, we don't really and and so whenever the pitch comes in and the the catcher catches it you know on a stolen base he's really he's going to throw down here to try to get this runner out but in the in the the situation if the the game's out of hand and he doesn't really want to bother cuz it's not really going to make a difference either way and he just holds on to the ball you know and just then just throws it back to the pitcher for the next pitch and they kind of ignore him you, we, we, we would hear this we wouldn't give the batter credit for a stolen base but we, we would say it's defensive indifference catchers indifference and, but but really the, the technical term here would, would all it would technically be a fielder's choice and so again you know this is something that unless you're the the scorekeeper you really wouldn't have to worry about but uh, hopefully someday we'll have a whole series of videos on, on that but uh, at least now that, that, that you'll know, you'll be able to tell your friends that that, that is why you know a, a runner maybe didn't get credit for a double on a when he made it to second, or or why a runner didn't get credited for a stolen base late in the game.